Hey, a pleasant good evening, everybody. This is going to be a Calgary Flames season preview prior to their season, of course, kicking off this evening. The Flames, of course, last season finished a game below 500 mark at 26-27-3 with 55 points. They're coached by Daryl Sutter and have Brian Treveling as their, um, what's it called, uh, GM. And then you, of course, also have the great Johnny Goudreau when he's actually motivated and playing, and he was that last year, almost a points per game, 49 in 56 games. Elias Lindholm is one of the more underrated centers or wingers if you throw him to the right wing. He's going to play center this year. It looks like here, looking at this on here, and he had 47 points in 56 games, then led by Matthew Kachuk. That line, obviously, this team is a team in that Pacific Division, other than the Edmonton Oilers that are projected to win it, and the Vegas Golden Knights um, that are a team that also have a chance to definitely be that other playoff team. The other spot in this division is really up for the taking of who's going to get in the playoff. And the uh, hockey news has you guys projected as that third team. And that can definitely be rightfully so because you have the veteran in net of Jacob Markstrom. And then you brought in the youngster that he can mentor that was in Boston that had some good success, of course, with Providence. And then was all right while up with Boston and Daniel Vladar. So you're going to be able to see what he's able to do. Tyler Pitlick is a very good um, guy to have when he's about to come, not about to come, when he's able to come back from his lower body injury, excuse me. And then you also have the uh, career veteran, another guy that has a lower body injury that's been good on faceoffs, a good fourth liner in Brad Richardson as well. So this team has a good lineup. If Milan Lucic also can play more to how he played last year in the 56 game and actually show some promise and some ability at this point of his career to actually produce a little bit and not just be nothing but a shot blocker and just a couple hits guyer, then that is also a huge benefit. And then, of course, Andrew Maggiapani started emerging big time last year. Sean Monahan, Dylan Dubay. The big thing with this team is it looks like they're going to be very much through that Goudreau, Lindholm, and Kachuk, and then the Dubay, Monahan, and Maggiapani if they keep that together line. Because Trevor Lewis is a very nice veteran player, but he ain't a guy that's going to produce that much at this point of his career. Bachlin can produce a little bit, but with Milan Lucic and Lewis, that's not as good of the producer aforementioned on his line. I don't know how much he will. And then. You guys don't even have right now the full um, ability with Richardson and Pitlick to have that good fourth line together, being having them both injured, but it looks like it's going to be Glenn Gowden and Brett Ritchie playing down there, where right now they have you all playing an extra defenseman in Yuso Valamaki tonight, rather than having a extra full, or having all of the forwards and actually having a full-blown fourth line. So let's see if that comes to fruition. But this team is led more by the goaltending of Jacob Markstrom, those first two lines, and the defensive core that is led, of course, by Christopher Tanib, the veteran, and Nikita Zadorov, who has been really starting to develop and become just that good shot-blocking, uh, big-body defenseman that just knows his role at this point of his career and really has adjusted well into that. Noah F Hannafin is a guy that you think you're still going to be able to get more out of, and he's still only 24 years old. And then Rasmus Anderson is one of my favorite defensemen to watch. Alva Shillington, I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to do. And then Erica Branson is just a journeyman guy. Yusuf Alamaki, if he plays well, will probably knock Erica Branson out of the lineup. Plus, you guys got youngsters like Connor Zare, who unfortunately himself is week to week with an injury. And then Pelletier as well, Coronado, Connor Mackey, um, Stonegrim, Pedersen, Dustin Wolf played well. They lost a one nothing game, y'all's uh, team, to the Tuxin Roadrunners yesterday. So he played well down there for Stockton. So I think you all have some good things budding for the future. You have a good team this year that's projected to be in the playoffs, so be excited about that, Calgary Flames fan. And I think that's a good projection to start because that division after the Vegas Golden Knights and, of course, the aforementioned that most people have projected winning Edmonton Oilers is going to be a crapshoot of who gets that third spot. So I can easily see, because you have more of the veterans, you have the Goudreaux, you have the Kachucks, you have the Bachlands of the world. If Lucic can play more like he played last year, you have Lucic, and I'll give him credit for that compared to how he's played in the recent couple of years before that when he wasn't successful like he was back in his Boston days. And then if you can get something out of these bottom sixers that you brought in, then that will be helpful as well. Obviously, Pitlick, you know, is going to be a productive bottom sixer when he's able to come back and be healthy. So I think you filled in the good finish of the puzzle pieces. My only concern for this team offensively would be beyond the top two lines. 
who's going to produce there, unless if a youngster like Azare comes in or somebody really produces and does well and has that almost Jake Gensel like jump in and that really strikes the team and really helps the team through their lineup to add another offensive piece. Unless if somebody does that, you're not necessarily seeing that on paper, but that's really the only big concern going into the season because I do think Daniel Vladar, who is for some other people a concern, is going to be a good enough backup goaltender. Plus, then you have the youngster Tyler Parson, who has a chance as well. And then you also have Blake Coleman, saving the best for last. That is a very good acquisition that plays very good defense when it comes to defensive center forward. And he's going to be the guy that's going to be able to move down and either play on the fourth line consistently or slide with Michael Bachlin, depending who's playing better at that given moment. So I think that sets you up very nicely as well. Of course, he's still suspended, so he won't be in, in this game, in game one, but he's going to be a productive player and a key player for the team because of that bottom six. Like I said, he got the good defense of Bachlin, got the good defense of Coleman. We just need to see where that offense is going to come from in that bottom six so it doesn't have to be relied upon by the top two lines only. So I hope you all enjoyed this Calgary Flames season preview. You guys are projected to be in the playoffs, so celebrate that. Be glad for that. Now it's about executing it and getting it done on the ice. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Good luck this season, Flames fans. And enjoy the season and subscribe down below if you enjoy the content or up above it, the easy-to-use widget. Peace out and stay safe.